to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. We all know that thriving in business takes a very specific mindset. But what is that millionaire mindset? How can we break out of fear mode and start doing what it takes to take our business where we want it to be? In today's sponsored show, Sandra Funk of the House of Funk is here to chat about the interior design standard and the millionaire mindset. I can't think of anyone more qualified to talk about this mindset. Throughout her journey as a designer and her years teaching the interior design standard, Sandra has shown time and again that she not only gets the millionaire mindset, and I mean really, truly gets it, but that she knows how to teach it to others. And she knows how to help others to stop what they're doing, the things that are holding them back, and help them to truly embody confidence, value, and success. The designers that have come through the standard have earned their money back tenfold. They're, they've earned it back through their ability to raise their rates, to stick to their estimates, to set expectations with their clients. But most importantly, they've learned how to stand in their Sandra Funk space, right? As you'll hear in today's episode, one recent graduate of the standard has quadrupled her revenue. Yes, I said quadruple, right? So whether you're ready for the interior design standard or not, I hope that you will listen to today's episode because at least you will walk away with some ideas on how to put the millionaire mindset into play in your business. Hey, Sandra, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Thank you so much for having me. It's crazy. Like, sitting here looking at each other. It's a whole different level. I know. We've been doing this podcasting together for seven years. You were the third episode, I think, on the podcast. And this is the first time we're doing with video. So if you're listening, you can go to YouTube and watch us. We got our messy buns going. We're all ready to go. So fun. (laughs) I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my God. It's always fun. I was just talking about you today, uh, both on Instagram live and with my integrator. So my, my COO. So, you know, (laughs) you know what I was telling, I just have to tell you, she was like, we were doing our 90, we had our big three hour meeting today, our 90 day goals. What are we going to do? And I'm like, you know what I need after like, I said, this, this is, I said, and you know what? Son of a gun. I need a thank you system. I need a thank you process. I said, Sandra Funk has her thank you process. I said, I am interviewing that lady today. I said, we are very good friends. The last thing she has to do is thank me. And I guarantee you next week, I'll have a thank you note in my inbox, in my, my actual mailbox. I said, I, I aspire to do it like Sandra Funk. (laughs) (laughs) You're so funny. Um, that is, oh my God, that is my Midwest upbringing coming through so hardcore. Um, I was just in Michigan and damn, if you don't send a thank you note to these people, like my daughter got a gift for her 16th birthday and we were just in Michigan and she got it late. Like my mom, my mom didn't want to put it in the mail. She wanted to hand it to her, blah, blah, blah. But I said to my mom, did you get a thank you note from Parker yet? And she goes, no, I did not. Because it, there's like a mental checklist of like, you send a gift, you get a thank you. Like it is so intense. I'm not kidding. So intense. Um, that's just, that's just where I'm from. Like it's, uh, and it'll just hang there in my like 
co- subconscious mind causing all sorts of ruckus if I just don't yeah. sit down. Right. I think, My you know. problem is it hangs there for like a day or two and then it's gone. It's like, it's see like, you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It hangs there in my subconscious and for sure it's like in my, mo- my mom's ear and my grandmother <laughs> and all of them. Um, it also is hanging out in the sauna waiting for me to do it. Well, this it is the, well, that's what I said. I said, we need a system. We need a documented system. So this does not yeah. happen. <laughs> we just attacked our um, like event template. You know, like every time I do an event, you know, do yes. I need hair? Do I need makeup? Do I need this? Do I need that? Who do I need to speak to? You know, and the thank you note and the follow up and the upload the photos afterwards. And don't forget to do a post about summarizing for the thing. And there's a lot of steps every time you do one of these. That's that's exactly right. Because Stephanie, my CEO, said to me, well, I, I you know, look, I can imagine when you need thank you notes, but what is your list? I'm like, my list is a podcast guest. My list is a sponsor. My list is when I do a speaking engagement. It is a thank you to the organizer. Exact, a thank you to the panelists. Like, it's to chairman of the board clients. Like, like it's all the people. <laughs> it's a big list. It is. But you know what? You know why they go out? It's because there's a task that says to, to go out and somebody has hunted down that address. Exactly. And there's a template in there that says, dear so-and-so, thank you so much for being at the podcast. It's just, and I deviate. I don't write, yes. a te- but this just gets you going. It's the truth. And it also is the trigger in that, like you use Asana, we use Monday.com. Yeah. But that was the core of the conversation. Each one of these areas should have a thank you task with all the bullet points and all of the things that get done. I said, because it's living in my brain and that's a scary, squirrely place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very busy brain. I would be committed, I'm sure, if it ever was outside narrated. <laughs> if they do those scans, there's like just like 18 gerbils in there, not one. Yeah, like everything from like loading the dishwasher and having to count every item. One, two, right? get to five. I'm like, what do I care that there's five items? Stop, shut up. <laughs> Absolutely. <sighs> it's a good thing I don't mind craziness because, you know, clearly I live in craziness. Anyway, so here's the thing. We are here today <laughs> to talk about, of course, I want to know about the interior design standard and things that are happening and changing there because... I know every single launch of it, you do something else again to make it more valuable and update all the, all the crazy little systems and all the steps. Um, But as per typical, we always get some, some great CEO advice out of you on running our interior design businesses. So today we are going to talk about like the million dollar mindset. Um, And I love the premise of your conversation about this Sandra, because for decades in business, I know exactly A, the feeling that you're talking about, but B, the thing that you have to do that you're talking about is 100% proven right every time. So you explain it to us. What are we talking about today? So when I think about the million dollar mindset, I'm really thinking about staying in a really positive headspace. You know, we get knocked into negativity so, so easy and it's not our fault. It's evolutionary, right? We, we were, you know, cave people or whatever. (laughs) We were running around making sure we didn't get killed by predators or, you know, we had that feeling that winter was coming long before whatever the show that made us know that winter was coming. Um, (laughs) can't remember the name of the show. Anyway. Um, and we would have to hunt and gather and then store it away. You know, I see the squirrels like putting their nuts in the ground and I'm like, huh, yeah, we were there once. <laughs> so we have a negativity bias because we are, we, we are focused on scarcity, right? The winter is coming. We have to hunt. We have to gather. We have to save. We have to put away. And then also the predators, like we're just going to get taken out one day, right? Mm. We're all walking down the street and here comes the saber tooth tiger. So we have a negativity bias in us evolutionarily that we can't help. And we have to overcompensate with positivity, right? We have to bring more positivity to balance it because it's not naturally balanced. We naturally see the negative before we see the positive or too much, right? And so it's um, – and the truth is we, we hear this all the time with our standard members that they, they are – they're often just overwhelmed, depleted, exhausted, overwhelmed. They are um, – 
they get into this habit of being yes people, right? The mm. people pleaser mode where they're really trying to be everything to everyone and it runs them, it runs them down to zero. Mm. And so we're really just talking about ways to kind of bolster, ways to, um, to stay uplifted mm. when it, when, you know, the entrepreneurship is hard, let alone our industry is, um, primarily female, lots and lots of solos in the very beginning anyway. Yeah. Um, and they really need more, as much bolstering as possible. A hundred percent agree. And it's, um, it's tough. I mean, to, to that point, like doing it quote unquote alone, you and I, and many others do everything we can so that the people in the industry do not feel like they're doing it alone, right? Like this is our mission. You are not alone. You have people. We're here to help. We, you know, and we're here yeah. to connect you to people that can help. Right. But it is, a, it's, it's a real thing. I mean, even when I started the podcast and I finally was, you know, 80% separated from window works, I thought I would work at home. Like I had a podcast studio at home. I wasn't there three weeks, Sandra, three weeks. And I called Vinny on the phone. I'm like, uh, that, that showroom, that store space that we have in our little strip mall that we own. I'm like, is it, did that lady from the flower shop, did she ever come in and put her deposit? He's like, she was supposed to come on Monday. This was Thursday. I'm like, she didn't come. He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm coming over with a check. He's like, what? I'm like, I gotta be that people, <laughs> you know, like, yep. I'm over here alone, but I walk back and forth all day. And I just, get to burn steam and burn energy. And sometimes I just walk into Vin and I'm like, what do you think about this? And so you're right. It's, it's yeah. not a good thing to be, um, it, we, we might physically need to be alone, but we want to be part of a community where you, we can bounce ideas, right? Yes. And share and lift each other up. And we talk about rise, design, and rise, right? Yeah. Like it is, it's, it's our mantra because it's necessary because mm -hmm. we need to lift each other up. Yeah. And so the thing is, one of the things that struck me when you wrote the, um, you know, I, I always tell everybody, you have to write a pitch. Like, what are we going to talk about? Like, <laughs> like, like, I know you and I could just start talking, but that's not the process. Like you said one time on the show, everybody comes through the front door. Remember you said that? That's right. That's right. No, no sneaking around the back. <laughs> that's right. Like my girlfriend's mom's sister wants me to design for her. You, I remember you saying that. Oh yeah. I used to let that one go out of process and I would just meet with them on the side and I would do the thing. And then the people that were quote unquote, not most important to you, but like your reputation, like here they yeah. know you as this fantastic designer and all of a sudden their experience was less than. And I remember you saying that on the episode, it was because I didn't bring them through the front door and go through the whole process. So that's like a great Sandra-ism in our world here. <laughs> Thank you. So in the front door of the podcast mm -hmm. process, you mentioned the concept of there is no right time. There is no right time to hire, to invest, to, you know, market. And this is a feeling that I know that through our 40 years in business, we have rolled through, but I think it's a very important discussion. So talk to me about this. There is no right time. Sure. And I have a, just a natural funny story with my, my husband, Jay. So Jay and I have been talking about investing in rental properties. Okay. Interesting, right? Use right. his financial prowess um, and insane negotiating skills and my design everything, right? And I'm like, we can't lose, babe. It's we can't no do this, right? It's a no so brainer. <laughs> yeah, I've been on him about that. So we're looking at it. We're looking at it, right? And he says to me, okay, you know, things are going to, and he's a Wall Street guy, right? So he's like, things are going to be slowing down. Like interest rates are so high. Things have to naturally level off. Like, you know, things should be rolled things should be softening up in the, in the Coming real estate market, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So then all of a sudden, all I hear from him is he's like, you know, give it three months, four months, six months, whatever it was. Fine. So all of a sudden I start hearing from him, the economy softening this and that like, okay. I'm like, cool. This is exactly what you told me was going to happen in three, four, six months. Right. Now is the time to start looking at those properties that we were talking about. Right. Let's circle back and go look at those properties. Like they should be softening. We sh it should be time to invest. He's like, are you out of your mind <laughs> on the precipice of, of a recession? Are you mad? <laughs> what if I lose my job? And I'm like, wait, 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 you, excuse me. What you told me 
to wait six months until the, the shit hits the fan and, and then we swoop in with our little <laughs> nest egg and come in, right? She who has money saved when the shit hits the fan gets to buy the properties exactly. and we come in and make our investment. And he's like, what? not now, <laughs> not when the, and I'm like, oh. so will she ever own investment real estate? I don't know. Not probably not while married to this guy. So <laughs> it's the perfect double bind, right? Yeah, you yeah. damned if you, you damned if you are for us, for designers, it's, we can't think straight when we're crazy busy, right? right. We're so overwhelmed. We can't we're, we've got too much work. Everybody wants it yesterday. We just can't see straight. We can't possibly hire, train, invest, go to a conference, go to, you know, take the course, do the thing. And we can't do it when we're not slammed busy because there, we, when we're in fear mode of when will we, will, will we ever sign another client? Will we ever, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. So it is this, the perfect double bind. And the bottom line is, you're, you'll never feel ready because right. you're either overwhelmed or you're in fear mode. And I would tell you, I, I have to say a lot of times, whether it's chairman of the boards or just conversations at events and stuff, it is one of the questions that comes up a lot. It's like, I'm not sure if I can afford to hire or, and like, it's exactly as you said, when we're super busy, we know we need to hire, but we can't imagine doing it because who's going to tell them what to do, how, who's going to train them, right? Them. Exactly. Uh, of course, if you have the interior design standard, they can three quarters train themselves. Just saying, okay, yeah. <laughs> here's the things, go do it. I'll see you every day at two o'clock for a little wrap up. You know yep. what I mean? But yep. the thing is, is that then comes that moment of, Okay, I slowed down enough that I can visualize this, but should I make the investment in this now? It happens with hiring. It happens with putting money into marketing. It happens with investing in personal development. It happens in investing business development. And what I know to be true is just what the line that you said to me, you know, there is no right time. And right. the thing about it is, is for me, what I have learned is a business is a lifetime thing. It is whether you have a business for two years, 20 years, 40 years, all of the decisions are going to need to be made. And what I've learned is I don't think I've ever really felt 100% ready or confident in any major decision at that moment. There's always that little 10%, sometimes it's 40%, like, we're just going to go for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you do everything you can do to analyze the data to, you know, like, you know what I always say, you know, can you, I'm not going to say all the things I say, but I always say, is the mortgage paid? Can you buy the X, Y, Z's? And will your yeah. kids still have sneakers? Right? right. Like it's, if those things are covered, then you just have to make your best decision and go for it and release yourself that there's at any point in your entire business trajectory that any scary decision is not going to feel scary. It's period. Yeah, I love that. Right. Yeah. And that idea of like, start before you feel ready because you will never feel a hundred percent ready, mm -hmm. you know, unless it's like past your prime, you know, like, mm -hmm. and you're, but that's not the, that's not the entrepreneur that you want to be, you yeah. know? Right. Right. You Where know, like, like I should have done it five years ago. Exactly. There's the things I should have, could have. Right. But it's when you are proactively running your business, it's when you are looking to the future and when you are thinking about building it. And it's funny because, um, I often take calls from designers that ask, they'll, I'll get an email. Like after your podcast episode, I'll get an email and it says, um, I, I follow Luann and I listen to all her podcasts and I, I heard Sandra Funk's episode and, you know, it's a lot of money and I'm just wondering, does Luann think I should do it? You know, like, and I'll read, you know, Mary Ali put the email in front of me. I'll be like, you know, just get her phone number. Like, let's get on a call. And because I do think everyone should do it, period. <laughs> but, but, you know, there are mitigating factors. Like, are you going to pay the mortgage? Are right. your kids going to have sneakers and, you know, Cheerios today, right? And there are people that, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But the the bottom line is, is mostly that is what I hear in those calls. It's, I'm not sure if it's the right time. And I'm like, if you're craving a process, 
for your business, if you're craving being able to deliver on a great client experience, if you're craving with being able to sleep at night and know the wallpaper guy was called, the tile guy knows the direction of the herringbone, then it's the right time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We were just going through... Um, just like some, we have a survey that they're take that the standard members are taking now when they enter, which has been incredible. Like just to hear what's going on in their business, and like a lot of it is like, who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing? Like, what's the story? And then also, what made you take the leap? Why are you here? Right? And the words that are coming out of it: burnout, um, desperate, defeated. Like it is so hard to do this feast or famine, right? And and I can hear in their voices that they just, they need that, they, they need the framework of a business because they are making it, they are getting to the point where they're in a position to buy the standard and become a standard member by their freaking will alone. Right, 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 right. They don't Keep have a business degree. They don't have the years, they don't have whatever, the background in it. They have just been pushing this boulder up the hill with sheer willpower. Yeah. And it's so impressive, but mm -hmm. it's completely exhausting. Yeah. No, it's, it's so true. And the thing is, for sure, you come to something like the standard in that moment of it's, it's the last hurrah. Like I have a Hail Mary throw in me. Like, you know, if right. it's this or I'm like out, right? But I also you know, know that feeling of like when you said there's no, never the right time, you know, that thing that Jay is in that loop, like we got to <laughs> wait until the properties are less expensive. Now they're less expensive because the economy's doing a thing and I might be part of the thing. Right. It's like, I have to tell you, that's not a thing of Vinny's. And, mm. and because I, I don't know why, because it's entrepreneurial. Jay's yeah. Yeah. Jay's a company man. That's so true. he's, that's a different, because I think when he says, well, what if I lose my job? I said, well, then you'll make yourself another one. You're freaking brilliant. <laughs> exactly. Like, how about your wife? Your wife will support you. <laughs> or how about, you know, how about you take a minute and like take care of someone around the house so I can do uh, the 500 other ideas I have that I haven't been able to get to. Exactly. Take the kids back and forth to the classes. I like, you know, I got it. <laughs> yeah. I'll launch the other three things I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. But I, I would tell you that. I, you know me. There's a thousand things I learned being side by side with Vinny over the years. And that is one of the big, big uh, apps. That's why when I saw it on the paper, I'm like, yes, that is something that people need to know. They need to understand that no matter how confident somebody looks, even you and I, we're talking about, you know, sort of tongue in cheek mocking Jay about not having the entrepreneurial spirit. But the thing is, even Vinny, even you, even me, when we dwell in that and we push to do it and we take the risk, it still isn't because we're like, yeah, exactly right time. Got this. There's always that part that is like, and what I think what it is, is working side by side with him all these years and watching him function and watching him process risk. That's really what it is, right? Yes. Processing risk. Yes. Right? It's yes, do the due diligence, but there's everything we've ever done has always put that one component of, well, we're just going to have to put the guess, you know, the footprint, the, you know, the, the, what is it? The pedal to the metal. Like, we're, right. like, like we're going to do it. And the thing about it is, is there are certain tenants in business that regardless of what we're going through, like marketing is always an investment period and of discussion. You can, you know, when we prepare, like, you know, you've heard the episodes where we've had gone through recessions and different things on business. And I've laid out the, that we, I laid out after COVID, like the things that you do when you are scared for your panties, <laughs> if your business is yeah. going to survive. And I went through all the things that Vin and I have done over the years when we've faced the different recessions. And the thing about it is, is it is literally, we will go without payroll for us before we cut marketing. It's a non-negotiable. And does yeah. that feel safe? Does that feel easy? Like, no. hey, let me write a $25,000 check for this marketing initiative when I'm not paying, making a paycheck right now. No, it doesn't. But that's your point. It's never the right time. There's just certain things that you always have to invest in if you want your business to thrive and survive. Absolutely. Well, I say all the time, if you believe, if you believe in your design abilities, 
if you believe that you belong in business, if you believe you'll be in business in five years, then there is no question that you should invest in improving your business, right? right? That's if you're so like, cool. I might I might be somebody's best employee instead of the owner of the business, then sure, that's okay. Right. Not Right. That's, but if you believe that you are in the right seat and you are in the right role and this is and this is the right thing for you, then you need to drive to improve it. You know, it, all that it. is one of the most clear sentences I've ever heard about whether or not it's a smart decision to invest in your your business or not. If you believe you are in the right seat, if you believe that you are a designer and that's what you're called to do. If you believe you're still going to be in business in five years, like that is so like, because you can answer that, so, that question for yourself. And that's where I think once you come to that answer, that's when you have to take the advice of people like yourself that have been there, done that, put the risk on the line, watched it pay, pay off. And you say, okay, so this is the leap of faith part, but I'm taking it from somebody that I really trust her path and her business and what she's created and then go do it. Right. Because, um, that's, that's really, that's, 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 that's a nice aha moment. I love that one. <laughs> we are noting that down for the show notes, Sandra, right? Quote right here. <laughs> no, but I think that's right. Like it's, it's, um, I hear from standard members all the time. I'm like, what, you know, what's the biggest takeaway to, and they're like, I just can't believe I didn't do it when I first heard about it. Yeah. You know, cause I just, I knew that yeah. I would eventually. And then, um, I have one designer say to me, um, I think I left a hundred thousand dollars on the table between when I heard about the program and when I took it. Like wow. I, I think cause it's such a transformation. Mm. It's, I have a funny one. I had, I wrote this down cause I, I just got this quote and I like needed to tell you all. Elena Mendelssohn told me recently, she would never have stood in her space or believed in her intellectual property, believed that she really, her design work is intellectual property that's worth money, right? Mm -hmm. um, had it not been for the standard. And she said, I literally quadrupled my income in one year. Wow. Quadrupled. Quadrupled. Because she just wasn't taking it as seriously as she should have been, right? Like taking right. it to heart. And that's the opportunity cost of not starting before you're ready. Right, right. And that's where, you know, I don't know, is it $5,000 still? I, I keep wanting you to make it $15,000. Uh, $44.99. I always have to write it down. <laughs> you know, that's where like my brain goes to when people ask me about it. I'm like, I don't know, can you take $4,500 and turn it into another $4,500? And if you can do that one time, then you are going to do it 20, 30, 40 times over. And mostly you're going to take 45 and turn it into 45,000. Right. Yes. And, and that's the beauty of once you have the path, the whole system and the templates and the education and the community from the interior design center, you aren't just going to turn that into one new opportunity. You're going to turn it into opportunities for the rest of your design career. So exactly. Cause it's, a, it's the, business model. It's the mindset. It's the way you charge and, and the way you bring the ex client experience through. It's, it, it's such a transformation. It, you, you can't help but make your money back and then tenfold and then a hundredfold and then quadrupling your income. Like yeah. it's, um, it's just, there's so many shifts. And we were talking about earlier, you know, even if you just take bits and pieces of it, even if you aren't like, even if you just get that concept down of, of how to charge and like what the markup looks like and how to get those better margins, or you take the concept of understanding how to charge a flat fee, right? All, all any of these little bits will have the impact of clearly making your money back. And then you start to layer them in because it's lifetime access, right? So mm -hmm. then you start to layer them in and you start to you get into that accountability group, you get into the community group, and you really start to layer that in. And then I hear things like quadruple, yeah, you know, yeah, and it's, yeah. but, and I'm hearing that day in and day out, yeah. which is I love just it. incredible. And I love that aspect of it. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't remember if I told this on the last episode or not, but I do remember a conversation with somebody who was one of those calls, you know, I want to know if you think I should join the standard or not. And there in the conversation, she was specifically describing 
I said, well, why do you think, why are you interested in it? Like what's, what's your motivator for even considering it? Right. And I don't remember what the aspect was, but there she, you know, she very clearly defined, I think this particular part of it would be beneficial to me, but you know, if I'm only using one part of it and there's, you know, 90% of the other stuff. And I was like, and that one part, if you lock that one part down in your business, what is that worth to you in the future ability to generate revenue for your business? And she was like, oh, and I said, right. So, and I, I love that idea that twofold, you could be seasoned, a seasoned designer and come to it to just get certain things finally just tightened up. Like maybe you don't need the whole cookie cutter. This right. is all of it. Right. But if you finally just tighten up a certain things, it's worth it. And if you're newer, maybe you only use certain things also because it's, it's tough and it's overwhelming and you're flying the plane while you're building it feeling right. But the whole point is with the ongoing community and activities and all of that, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, what do we, do we decide? I always used to say the, the analogy of the marathon. I want to run a marathon, right? Whoever I am, I want to run a marathon. Do we go out day one and run 26 miles and go, that's it. I only made it a mile. I'm done. <laughs> no. We start out. We, we run one mile on Monday. We run a mile and a half on Tuesday. We take Wednesday off. We're a mile and a half on Thursday. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I mean? And yep. by the 13th week, we are killing 26 miles. Yeah. No, and it's, and that's, I think, one of the things, right? I love the, what you were saying. Like, the season designers come in, and, like, maybe they have, like, a scattered processes, and this is, like, everything is documented. Okay, cool. That's a big level up, right? You can see efficiencies. You can see training. You can see, like, maybe even just use it because you want to hire, and it, you just want it to train everyone for you, right? right? Boom, off you go. And then the newbies come in. I want to set the business up right from the beginning. And they do. They go through it once and they get the concepts down, right? Mm -hmm. And then they go through it. Every six months we relaunch. We make improvements. We give little upgrades, little details, right? So maybe you go through it every time we launch and you pull another layer and you pull another little bit of depth. Um, mm -hmm. We see that a lot too, that like I went through it. I had these big ahas. I've made big, you know, big changes. They love the potential client process and like how we talk about projects and how we set up timelines and everything. Um, and just getting out of overwhelm yeah. because they know everything is, everything is documented yeah. and everything is clear uh, yeah. with the clients. And it just, it just really calms down client communication. Just that idea of everything's on fire all the time. Right. Like we just right. see that, that like that settles right down. Right. Take a breath. We got this. Taking a breath. There's a template for it. <laughs> yeah. Which I love. <laughs> love it. Right. So, so that is the next phase of entrepreneurship, whether it's you come to it in six months or you come to it in six years or you come to it in 20 years, but is the permission to invest in yourself and your business. It's giving yourself that permission. I feel like, um, for Vin, it was always just, can I handle the risk? But I feel like with creative entrepreneurs, it centers less around tolerance for risk, but more around, do I deserve it? Is it, should I invest my money in this? I, I once, I, I think I told you one time the conversation with Sarah Brennan one time, and she was only in business in, uh, she was, just about her year anniversary. I had met her when she was six months in business. We had been working and talking and communicating from six months to it was one month before her year anniversary in business. And I was having a Power Talk Friday um, tour, all day coaching event. And she said to me, Luann, I have $10,000 in my bank account and my business bank account. And your Power Talk Friday is $1,895 or $1,795, whatever it is. And she said, I, I hope you'll give me the honest answer, but should I basically take $2,000 out of $10,000 and invest in this? And of course I do. Is the mortgage paid for? Do the kids have Cheerios and sneakers? And she's like, well, this is my business account. And I was like, great. So this is just for your business. And she said, yeah. I said, yeah, lady, put the, the money in and make it work for you. And that yeah. is the same conversation I've said over and over about the standard. Put the money in and make it work for you. And even if it feels like if you're newer in business and $4,500 is a lot of what you have available, it's sort of like, well, what is that money doing for you in the checking account? Right. 
right, if that's your profit free and clear, like let's not let's not have it be the client's balance too. Right. If that's your profit free and clear, then that that is what it is meant to do, to reinvest, to improve and grow. Right? That's right. That's right. And the thing is, uh, you know, obviously in the beginning of business, those investments seem like a big amount of money to, against what's available in yeah. the checkbook, right? So it's harder to, like, with your less experience in entrepreneurship, it's harder to understand that you're worth it. But it's really, that is the point of it there, right? Because if you've got 10 grand in your bank account or 20 grand or 30 grand, you're not living off of that. That's your business money, right? And it's, what else is it going to do? Like what it sit there, like when you could get more knowledge, you could get your business on the design standard and literally next month deliver a better client experience, right? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. And it's about it, like what Sarah did. It's about turning $2,000 into 20,000 because she left with increased knowledge, mm -hmm. right? She mm -hmm. left with like a big aha moment. She left with the understanding that she should be buying wholesale and selling at retail, not buying at some little designer discount and selling for some little fixed margin amount that is never going to cover her costs, right? Like exactly. those little moments when you were at Luann Live jumping up and down on stage, <laughs> that, that retail, that margin is for you, right? That is like one of my favorite moments oh my ever. God. I hope you oh have that on video. When Natasha Jones made a little gif out of it, of me like jumping like a lunatic. She's like, she's levitating. She's levitating. I'm like, that percentage is for you. Stop giving it away. <laughs> that little nugget could change your business. That's right. And I watch it change people's businesses all the time because there are so many designers who are doing this little designer discount and they're charging 10% or 20% or even 30% markup. I tracked it, people. That is break even. 35% markup is break even. That's right. So That's stop right. it. That's right. And the thing about break even markup is what I know to be true and I know you know to be true is you can survive. 10, 15, 20, 30 years in business at break even markup. You can be like, it's like, it's like fake business. That's right? what my husband always says it. That's making a job. That's right. That's right. That's exactly making right. yourself a job. That's not making yourself wealth. Exactly. Exactly. Because you're paying your salary, you've paying for your car payments, all the things. Yeah, hey, you're but, burning and churning. Right. And, and to, to his point, that's like getting a salary from somebody to do something. But when you're a business owner, you should be creating your wealth. You should be creating your lifestyle. You should be creating that nest egg to buy that investment home that we're going to have to bang them over the head with so that you finally get it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so also, you're worth it. Like you, you can't. You can't get those nuggets from the standard or from Luann Live if you don't get off your booty and invest in yourself right, and believe right. in yourself right. and sign up. Right. And you know, I know that you feel this way. You mentioned it earlier. If you're going to be the most important employee to someone else, there is nothing wrong with being yep. the most important employee to somebody else. We need the most important employee. We will pay that most important employee. You know, you have a design firm, like you would not have a mediocre project manager. You are happy and willing and all the positive flow want that project manager who's rock star to feel well compensated. So, and the thing is that well compensation that you're giving yourself in your business, cause you're only running it at 35% margin and there's never anything left over other than your salary. You can have that job and not carry all the crap on your head. Go to sleep at night. It's Sandra's firm, but she has the problem. Right. right. Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Yes. If you're, yeah, that is it. If you're not going to put yourself in the game, right? Get the knowledge, go out there and get the real information to really become a business owner. And again, that's about building wealth. Right. It's a different thing. That's right. It's a different yeah. thing. You know, and I love that that's another um, actual deliverable of having the interior design standard. We always talk about the, the tangible, the, the templates, the worksheets, the documentation, and blah, blah, blah. But it is the mentorship. Like here you are, you're showing up in the community, you're answering the questions, you're sharing your experiences, how you did it. Because, you know, we've had many podcasts where you have said, look, I've made the mistakes. It's not like you popped out like, hey, I'm ready to go. I've got this all worked out. And so it's that too, that is so valuable. It's like, 
Why do you require yourself to painfully build a business through trial and error when someone like Sandra is here to say, do it this way, this works. Yeah. I already <laughs> built it through painful trial and error. I, you know, I have a coach I meet with every week. And at one point or another, I said to my coach, why, why do I feel like I just am like every single time? Like just, I feel like I went through all the different struggles and all the different hardships and all the different things. And he's like, you, this was your path. You have, it, this is karma. You had to go through all that so that when you're sitting there in design sips with the questions or in the community calls or in the, you know, group events or live when I spoke at high point recently and we did Q and a, and I said, I will answer questions until the last person gives up on me. Feel That's free right. to leave if you need to go. <laughs> and we did two hours total. Wow. Yeah. Just like, keep it coming people. I got, I got answered because I've been through it. I've been there. Like this is, you know, my 20 something year as a designer, you know, 18 something year as a business owner. Um, and I, in the Northeast with the, you know, I would argue some pretty tough negotiating, tough talking, <laughs> big type A clients. Um, been there, been there, yeah, done it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you know, I always, um, suspect that, but have you, now you have the experience of New York, New Jersey and Tennessee. Are they more hardcore here in the dealings and the go to go to go? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, and you know, maybe it's a little bit more, um, uh, judiciously done elsewhere, but it, no, from the straight up, you're going to hit it straight on. Yeah. No, it's pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, I have often said, uh, on the podcast, you know, like you need to learn the skills of negotiation and salesmanship and stuff, because, you know, we're negotiating every day, whether it's with our five-year-old kids or our, our clients. And I said, and when you climb your business up and you build your your experience up to aspire and to attain working at the luxury level. These are seasoned business people. You know, do I want to go up against Jay in a negotiation? I, I like would put my negotiation skills up against almost anybody. And I would think twice. I'd still do it because I'm fearless. Right. But I'd be like, well, it is Jay. (laughs) He negotiates on wall street. Like, you know, but I've said that line, like negotiation is part of their world and, 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 and pulling out, are you actually going to deliver to me what you're saying you're going to deliver to me? And so as an interior designer, You've got to be able to express that and you have to know you can do it. And it's vehicles like the interior design standard that once you put all that to place, now up comes the confidence, up comes the, yeah, I got this. Oh, go ahead. Ask me any question because I have an answer for it. I, how am I going to this? How is the plumber going to that? How is the the tiler going to that? Yeah, I have the answer for it as opposed to, well, I'll eventually let them know. Matter of fact, let me make a note of that while we're talking. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. No, I think there's a difference. There's a, a marked difference in confidence yeah. from, you know, the before and the after to, yeah. from doing the standard, like yeah. just under, just, just, it's like, you don't even know what you don't know. And so much of it is the mindset of like, I talk about this all the time and the standard of really, really, really setting boundaries and expectations with those clients. Like it is so important to communicate to them blatantly how this is going to go down. Like we were, you were talking about being real straightforward with stuff, Mm. like just (laughs) real clear. And that is exactly right. You know, and then, and creating uh, boundaries and guidelines and clarity and then just sticking to it. And my whole thing is anything that's, you know, anything like one round of revision or what the flat fees are going to be or how much this is going to cost or how long this is going to take. That conversation is all the way before you even sign on. Right. Because, Somebody who's going to tell you how much it should cost, how long it's going to take, how they want it done, when they want to pay, when the, da, 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 that's that, that's that mode where they're running the, they're running the project, they're running the business and you're, you know, you're in reaction. reaction. That's yeah. how we end up fighting fires. That's right. That's how you end up running around like a little chicken with your head cut off because you are, you're trying to fit your round 
peg into their square hole. And really, the only person who can tell that client how this is going to go down is you because it's your business. Mm-hmm. You're the expert. You're the one who has done this 10 times, 15 times, 20 years, whatever, whatever, however many times. You've done it more than they have. You right. are the expert. And, and stepping into that role is one of the big, big transformations that we see. And the thing about it is, is I know you know it from the Dark Night of the Soul event that, you know, we've talked about, but you, it's, it's almost impossible to step into that role of the leader of the project and the expert if the way the project is going to happen is in your head. You know what I mean? Like it has to be documented. It has to be process driven. And that's when you're able to look at somebody and say, hey, 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 no, no, no. This is when this happens. Then that happens. And then if that happens, then I'll do that. And if that doesn't happen and you don't do this, then that doesn't happen. But when we're not process driven and we don't have it documented, then we're, 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 not making it up in real time because we kind of know what we're doing, but we are making up the conversation. We're like, oh yeah, I'm, oh yeah, I'll tell you about that. That's how it works. As opposed to, I'm going to come to you and tell you what happens. And yeah. that was the transformation that you had in your business. You invested in yourself after the dark night of the soul. Remember? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No. And, and, you know, I was joking about like the small ball rocking back and forth under my desk. I'm like, been there. Cause I was reading through these things and I'm like, oh, been there. Like I have been that about to, like about to crumble. Right. 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 Um, And I want to tell you, I think that the big thing for me is yes, if you really are unfortunately in a spot where you really are feeling like, I don't know if I can do this. This is the last straw, right? That that's, that's sad. And I'm, I'm heartbroken to know, and I do know there's, there's, there's those of us in business that feel that way. And, and yes, run to the interior design standard, but yeah, you were in a ball, like you were rocking under the desk and stuff, but you're still Sandra Funk. I knew you were going to stand up, like stop, yes. like you were going to stand up, you know, and, and anybody that knows you, knows you were going to. And so I also know that there's others like you out there that are are wondering, well, if I'm not really with my complete back against the wall and I'm not feeling completely helpless and hopeless, then I guess it's not for me. It's like, no, 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 no. It is too, because it is possible to exist with an inner belief of yourself that you're capable of something, but still need the path to get there. And that can be combined right now with the interior design standard as well. It's like, do I need to invent the wheel or can I just go roll Sanders wheel down the block? Right. Right. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, there was, I was having a conversation with a designer recently who was saying to me, it's, it's not that I didn't, it's not that I was, didn't know how long this project was going to take or how detailed a design project was, but it wasn't until I did the standard and saw the sheer number of steps that I actually started giving myself an appropriate fee and an appropriate amount of time to execute this extremely detailed and lengthy process that is interior design. And we're talking full renovation, you know, full gig, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, she just was like, it wasn't until I saw it on paper or, Mm -hmm. you know, on the computer screen, whatever, that I really said, I've been undercutting myself because like you said, we know it. And if we don't have a document, we know it and we can kind of speak to it, but you know what we do? We always think that it's going to be easier. Underestimate it. You always underestimate how much time it's going to take you to do, which means you underestimate how much estimate profit you build in for yourself. Right. And you, way underestimate how long it's going to take. Right. And what happens is when it's not documented in front of you, when your client says, oh, I don't know. I mean, can we do this in six months instead of nine? Your brain goes maybe six months instead of nine. You're like, that's not possible, but you might, you know, settle on seven. But when you have it in front of you, you're just like, no, 
it's it's either vanilla ice cream or chocolate. Pick it. Like this is right. nine months is not seven. Nine months is not six. I have done this. You know my favorite line in my experience. In my experience, which by the way is as a practicing interior designer, not you, Mister like CPA. What the hell do you know about the process? You're just yeah. going to say I can do it in less time. Awesome. Good for you. Why don't you go do it in less time? Because I'm the professional and I know it's going to take me nine months. And then exactly. you, 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 to your point, you then charge appropriately, but you do like, I, like that was, that's a good way to say, it because that's what I was shooting for. I can be somewhat confident in my process, in my abilities, but without that documentation and what that designer of yours witnessed in her transformation, you are, are less likely to just say, no, this is my highway. This is how I do it. Yeah. And that's what, and you just said it so perfectly, chocolate or vanilla. It's not nine months or six months or seven months or eight months. It's, this is what this takes. Period. (laughs) I am educating you as the expert. Exactly. Period. Right? It's chocolate or vanilla. And when you start to try to negotiate fees or timelines or margins or any of it, When you actually, like we do a wealth manifestation, commonly called a budget, right? When you actually know how much money your goal, how much money you want to make, how much money that has to roll up to, to top line sales, how much money that has to roll up to of margins, right? What you need to keep your margins at, how you need to keep your expenses under control. Like when you know, these are the three levers I can pull to make more money, right? Keep my expenses under control, charge more margin, charge more markup and this is my goal, you stop giving away the damn baby with the bathwater because that's your family's nest egg. That's That's your wealth that you are building because you are not an employee. You are a business owner. And that is a big shift. That's 100%. I'll never forget Alinda Morris on the podcast episode saying after she listened to episode after episode and talking about profit and da-da-da-da-da, and she just said, I realized every time... I don't complete my minimum billable hours per week. I am borrowing from my family's personal finances. Like I'm at work all day, but who's paying me? So I didn't make any money. So that means like if I wasn't going to make any money, I may as well have spent the day with my kids kayaking because it was as productive. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. And so that's, that's a, and that's the other thing. That's what I really love. I love that as part of the standard, you get the benefit of this type of conversation and this type of information. I'm going to tell you right now, if the only thing someone took away from being in the interior design standard is the profitability factor and how to calculate it, how to, how to manage it, how to project it, how to create it, Stop. Yeah. Like it's done. Changer. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Life changing. That's it. I love it. I love it. So all of this talk about the interior design standard, you only open it twice a year. When is the next launch for it? And tell us the details of it. Perfect. So we are open September 25th through September 29th. So coming up, um, again, it's $4,499. You can reserve your spot anytime because we do have limited seating. And um, it's really important that you guys use Luann's link so that she knows that you heard about this on the podcast, right? So interiordesignstandard.com forward slash Luann. Okay. So just clarify for me, because I think this is new either last launch or the launch before. It used to be that you had to wait until the 25th to sign up. Now they can sign up today, but but the, the transaction doesn't happen until September. Like, just get us in the weeds on – so somebody knows when the 4500 is coming out of their checkbook, right? Perfect. Yep. So you can reserve your spot for 1500 today, and then the balance due on that is charged the day before enrollment opens. Okay. To confirm that you have your spot. Yeah, because you do – you do limit the attendance for each launch because you want to be able to deliver the right, you know, amount of energy, information, all the things. This isn't just, hey, uh, buy it, you'll get a download on, you know, with a link on your computer, download it, see you never. <laughs> like, right, 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 right. No, we have community thing. calls. We put together a, a affiliate groups. Um Accountability groups, not affiliate groups, accountability groups. We really make sure that you have like your people. We do an incredible amount of customer service um, from emails to phone calls to Zooms to whatever it is that you need. We are um, 
and then of course we do in-person events. So we have, um, like we just had a great get to get a big party in high point for all the standard members. So yeah, it is, um, we have a limited seat because we really want to make sure that we have like really high quality as with everyone going through. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love that you can reserve your spot now so that, you know, you get in all the things. I love that. And I have to say, I, every conversation with you, I learn something. I always get my aha moments and I'm just going to put you on the spot and I'm going to say, I don't know. Do you want to leave us with like some kind of one more, one more knowledge bomb here? Or should I just say goodbye? Where do you think? <laughs> no, no, let's do it. Um, so again, we were talking about the million dollar mindset, right? And sometimes it's mindset, right? It's starting before you're ready. It's the negativity bias that we have to overcome all of that. And sometimes there's areas that are tangible that you really can make improvements mm which will greatly empower you and improve your confidence. And it's things like doing Luann University, going to Luann Live, doing the interior design standard, right? These are tangible level ups that you can make, investments in yourself, in your business, that you can take that investment and and it goes tenfold mm-hmm. because you you make those connections, you you make those aha moments, you make those big strides and your business can catapult way, way, way ahead of where you, where, of whatever mindset you're in currently. That's how we make these big moves. I love it. I love it. And I would tell you that, you know, 900 interviews, almost a thousand between the two podcasts, two a one, Sandra, anyone that has reached a level of success that objectively is like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And or just reach the level that they personally set for themselves. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a Sandra Funk or a Corey Damon Jenkins or Laura Umansky, right? Like it could just be, but every one to a one has shared with me that they have always invested in their business from this standpoint, knowledge, personal development, you know, whatever it is. And like yourself and me, we always have a business coach, like always, like I'm never without a business coach. You're never without a business coach. And so I love that you bringing it home to that, you know, million dollar mindset is that it is, you know, an actual tangible thing and an important thing to do in your business is to invest in yourself and your business. Yeah. All the way. Love it. Love it. Love it. it. All right, my friend. I love your guts. You know, (laughs) thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. Just amazing. Every time I talk to Sandra, I just love it. She absolutely has a way of tapping into the heart of the issues that exist for you. Right. When you the things you struggle with, the things that bottleneck you, she gets it. And there were so many good things in this episode. Let's talk about a couple in particular. The first one is kind of simple, but not. It's one of those. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. And that is that um, big changes in our business, whether it's hiring, niching down, investing, investing in something like the standard. Sandra said, you're not always going to feel ready. And she said, you know what? You might never feel ready for those big decisions in your business and your life. It's never going to feel exactly perfectly like the right time, that there's no fear involved in all, in in the thing, in the decision at all, right? And that is the key right there. I think that sometimes when we talk with less seasoned entrepreneurs, when there's fear involved in any decision, it's automatically uh, processed like, I guess I shouldn't do it because I have fear. And that's the message that Sandra wants you to know. No, 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 no. There's always going to be fear, but you do the things, you do the vetting, you do the preparing, you do the things that you know, and you make a good decision. And then the last part of that decision is always that leap of faith. That's that millionaire mindset that like, I got this, I'm going to do it. And that's her message to us. Okay. So there is a lot to be said for preparation. Okay. But the rest that mm, that's the millionaire mindset, that cornerstone of that. Right. And I also want to emphasize what Sandra said about confidence. She said that she notes a huge difference in confidence before designers, before they go through the standard and after. Okay. And it makes sense because the standard is all about having a process. 
It's all about you getting clear and precise about what you do, how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. And that's why the standard is very good, even for seasoned designers, because if everything you know is in your head and it's not out on a process, printed, duplicatable, repeatable, presentable to a client, that's when we get in trouble. Okay. If you have it all laid out, it's up there up front for the client to see, for your team to see. These are our rates. This is how long it's going to take. This is when you'll hear from us. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. That's a process, but it has to be out there for the client to see, not in your brain. Okay. Because when it's only in your brain, that's when they can push you back. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, you didn't tell me that. Right. And so what I know is that 99% of all interior designers and probably even hundred percent of all interior designers could benefit from taking the interior design standard. Right. It's I've, I've met designers that have duplicated entirely and just adopted it. And then I've met many designers that are like, you know what? These three sections like completely were my bottlenecks, were my gaps. And it like definitely game changer for my business, because a lot of you are doing many, many things right in your business right? And there's just these certain things that each of us have. And we're just like, please, how do I get out of this loop that I'm in of keep making the same mistake over and over again? And it's usually the root cause is a lack of a clear process. And so the standard can help you with that. Okay. So I would tell you if you are at a point where you are considering this, but you are feeling just a tiny bit afraid still, (laughs) remember that fear is going to be there all the way until you click buy. Usually once you click buy on something, it's like, okay, I did the thing. I'm good. But it'll definitely go away once you go through the standard and you realize all the value that you get from it. Okay. So if you're interested, go to interiordesignstandard.com forward slash Luann interior design standard.com forward slash Luann. All right, Sandra, thank you so much, sweetie, for being here. I appreciate you so much. You are a rock star. You are a hashtag smart lady. And thank you for joining us today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.